in chapters 4 and 5 we discussed how to apply the conservation of energy which we discussed in the form of first law of thermodynamics to closed and open systems and uh, so what what this does is basically account for energy as it moves from one form to the other and as it moves from inside a system to out and outside to system to in. So we learned how to account for this energy and uh, we applied the basic conservation of energy principle uh, to open and closed systems. However, uh, we know that this conservation of energy principle does not always tell us whether a process will take place or not and we are going to see some examples of such processes where it only happens one way and not the other way. And uh, so we then uh, will see that uh, first law although is important and it is a test of whether a process can take place does not actually tell us whether a process will actually take place. And so uh, while the first law is important and there is no known example of the first law being violated, it is not the only test for a process to occur. And so therefore we uh, look at what is missing and uh, what can fill its place, right. So uh, to look at one example, let us look at uh, a hot cup of coffee, right. So we know that uh, when you have a hot cup of coffee uh, in a room, uh, let us call this a room, right. And assume for a second that this is, um, you know, a closed system and that no uh, water vapor or any of the other stuff escapes the system. So if you consider this as a system, we know that this hot cup of coffee will lose energy and uh, it will eventually cool down. That is uh, the energy lost by the water or the cup of coffee is uh, less than 0, right. So the change in energy of the coffee is less than 0. And where does that energy end up? That energy ends up in the room and that energy is gained by the room, right. And so uh, delta E uh, room is greater than 0. In fact, that delta E coffee uh, is equal to minus delta E room, right, where one is losing energy and the other is gaining energy. And this satisfies the first law of thermodynamics because the total energy remains constant, which is what the conservation of energy requires, right. But you might, and, and uh, this is no surprise, this is uh, very intuitive to us, but we know that the opposite can never happen. That is, the room uh, cannot transfer energy to the coffee or to the cup of tea. And we will never have a situation where um, there is energy transfer from a colder room to a warmer cup of coffee and the coffee will heat up or its temperature will rise with time. That never happens. Although that could also satisfy the conservation of energy principle where the uh, change in energy of the room is negative and the change in energy of the coffee is positive. So such a process while it satisfies the first law of thermodynamics will never occur because we know it from everyday experience uh, that it does not because we know that intuitively that uh, energy is usually transferred from low temperature, uh, higher temperature to lower and not the other way around, right. And similarly, let us take another example. So say that I have a container uh, and it is filled with ideal gas and I have a resistance heater installed um, inside and uh, this is uh, heating the gas, right. So I know that uh, I will have to supply electrical energy in order for this electrical heater to work and this ideal gas to then warm up and increase in temperature, right. So what is really happening? The what is happening is that the electrical energy uh, which is, which is uh, going around in the circuit is then converted to an energy that makes this wire warm and compared to the rest of the room and therefore there is heat transfer from the surface of the wire to the rest of the room, right. So in other words, there is heat transfer from the resistor to the gas, right. Now, uh, we do know that the opposite process will never occur, which is that if I supply heat to this gas and warm it up, right, uh, 
So if I supply some heat to this gas and warm it up, increase its temperature such that it transfers heat to the resistor instead of the other way around, then that resistor will not create electricity in the circuit. So we know that that will never happen where we heat this uh, resistor and then suddenly there is electricity going around in the circuit. So the opposite process will never occur although it too will then satisfy the first law of thermodynamics, right? So uh, this is another example of a process which uh, goes only in one direction although the reverse direction also satisfies the first law of thermodynamics but the process never actually uh, occurs in the other direction, right? Uh, to take one final example, let us consider a system uh, which is again, uh, let us say composed of a liquid and it has a paddle wheel attached to it and this paddle wheel has a, a rope coiled around it uh, and from it hangs a mass, right? And uh, so once I let the mass fall, uh, you know that the paddle wheel is rotated and once work is done on this system which comprises of the fluid that is inside this uh, Uh, that is inside this volume, uh, we know that work is done on this fluid and so therefore there is an increase in the internal energy of the fluid that comprises this system. But the opposite does not occur, right? It is not that if I increase its internal energy, for example, by heating from an external source, I cannot use that to rotate the paddle wheel and raise the weight back up. So uh, the opposite does not happen even though again it could have satisfied the first law of thermodynamics if it did happen, but we know from experience that it does not, right? So these examples uh, bring to the front uh, the need or the uh, rather uh, we know now know that the first law is not enough to define or to predict whether a process can actually take place or not. It is one of the tests that any process that does take place has to satisfy, but just because a process or a hypothetical process satisfies the first law does not mean that it will occur. And we now know that through these explicit examples. So to fill this gap, uh, we have another general principle called the second law of thermodynamics. And this second law of thermodynamics tells us that processes have directions and that certain directions are preferable over certain other directions and that generally processes occur only in one direction, right? And this, there is a directionality therefore to conversion of energy and uh, this is what the second law of thermodynamics is all about. But unlike the first law of thermodynamics, the second law of thermodynamics does not have a unique statement, right? Remember that the first law had this unique statement that all stationary adiabatic systems um, undergoing work transfer uh, between two states have the work transfer quantity is the same for all adiabatic stationary closed systems, right? But uh, the second law has no such fixed one statement. In fact, second law is studied or is stated through a combination of statements usually and we will state those statements when we come to it, right? So um, what to take away from this video is that first law is not adequate to determine whether a process will actually take place and if it does, in which direction it will take place. Uh, although all processes that do happen have to satisfy the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, the second, uh, to fill this gap, we have something called the second law of thermodynamics, which we will look at in this set of videos. Mm -hmm.